Hello, my name is Richard Gizzolo, 6th grade math teacher of New Jersey. This video today will focus on energy breaks inside the classroom. According to recent studies, the average middle schooler stays attentive in a class for 10 to 15 minutes, which means teachers have to come up with new exciting ways to keep the kids engaged. Energy breaks offer a unique, structured, and organized activity where students can get up out of their seats and release energy. In the next part of our video, you will see four educational energy breaks in practice. Okay, in class, right now we're going to do an energy break called Fraction Lineup. I'm going to hand out cards with fractions written on them. I'm going to hand them out face down. When I say go, please turn them face up, look at the fraction, and get yourself in order from least to greatest. Least being against this wall, greatest being against that wall. Okay? Any questions? Samika, can I ask you to be the captain for the class? When you guys are in order, you're going to tell me. Okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. Go. We're in order. Fantastic. Nice job, guys. Okay, everyone, right now we're going to do an energy break called the Four Continents. To start this activity, I'm going to project the name of a country on the board. Then you will all walk to the corresponding continent. Then I will reveal the correct answer, and we will move on to the next country. Ready? Okay, first one, what continent is Ireland in? If you got Europe, you're right over there. Second one, what continent is India in? All right, we're going to do an energy break now. This energy break is called the human protractor. And what we're going to be doing is reviewing figurative language. Right? I will give you a phrase, and then and this phrase contains some figurative language. If you think the phrase is a simile, you're going to raise your hands above your head. If you think the phrase is hyperbole, you're going to hold your arms outstretched in front. And if you think the phrase is onomatopoeia, you're going to bend down and touch your toes. Okay? Can we get that, everybody? All right, we good? We're good. All right? Okay, because we went over all this. You should know this. All right, let's go. All right, boom, bang, pow. Okay. Yep, those of you who are bending down, it's onomatopoeia, and you are right. Okay? But don't, it's okay. You know, we go on. It's just more it's fun. It's cold as a freezer outside. Okay. Those of you who have your hands up, it's a simile, comparison using like a raz. Very good. All right. Today, we're going to focus on the phylum chordata. So if you remember the different classes, reptiles, amphibians, fish, birds, and anybody remember the other? Mammals. Mammals. Very good. Those five classes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a card with the name of an animal on it. And when I say go, turn over your card and run to the corner of the room where your particular class, chordata, is. Mammals, amphibians, birds, fish, and reptiles up here. Okay, understand? Passing out the cards. One for you, Rich. And this one's for you, Tamika. Thank you. Marion, this is yours. Don't peek in to go. And for you, Rachel, that one's yours. When I say three, you're going to go to your respective corners to the class of the phylum chordata. One, two, three, go! Hold up your animals and let's see how well you did. A knoll, Komodo dragon, alligator, giant tortoise, and King Cobra, the reptiles are perfect.